bless you bless you bless you in the mighty name of jesus my name is supposed to peter daniel by the special grace of god you are watching me in heaven and hell live program the one we used to do every monday to friday i pray the lord god will bless you in the mighty name of jesus today we want to go into a a very uh let me say one of the things that is giving issues in the christian door some people how to pray I, I will not just say how to pray that so i want to go into deep the personality of god today and it is very important thing for you to hear it's something you need to hear it is not something you can just overlook so you i want i will advise you to stay and stay to listen I pray the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Our everlasting Father, we want to appreciate your holy name because you are faithful. You are wonderful. You are mighty. You are glorious. In all situations, you are God. Be thou glorified and exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we want to ask you for forgiveness of every kind of thing we might have seen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And O oh Lord God Almighty, we are only also asking you for the power of your Holy Spirit to fill our hearts this morning and to release the unctions and the anointing. And we are also asking that you open our eyes to see the things of the Spirit and to, and to understand the mystery of your word. Thank you, Father, because you are faithful. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, today we want to talk about the personality of Jesus Christ. There's this kind of error that is going on in the church whenever Christians are praying. Some people believe that Jesus Christ is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Some people believe that Jesus Christ is the Son, just a Son, that there is also a Father somewhere. And there is all Holy Spirit somewhere. And some people believe that Jesus Christ is one of the prophets that is being sent to the world. That is not the Son of God, neither is it the Holy Spirit, neither is it God. That is just a messenger. And today we want to throw light to who Jesus is. We want to explain the, 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 what, what God told us by saying what God says in the Bible, by saying, let us create man in our own image. Who are, who are we? Are we the image of God? Or we are the image of the Holy Spirit? Or we are the image of Jesus Christ himself? Or we are the image of the personality, the personality? Are they even personality? Are they different people? Are they different personality coming together to become one? Is it at a point of unity that makes them to be one? These are the questions that we want to iron today by the grace of God. Through the scripture, not just going to be ironing it from the, you know, from the, from the ideological uh, uh, mind, but from the scriptures and from what the Bible says. So we are going to, I'm going to explain to you by the grace of God today, to God today I was asking God, in fact, about 10 or 15 minutes ago, I was still asking God, I was like teach your people. He said, teach them about my personality. So, um, I want to teach you from the experience and uh, from the teaching that Jesus Christ has teach me. I want to teach you who Jesus is. How should we call him? Should we just call him the son of David? As, a, as some people call him. Should we call him Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, our Savior? Is he even God? Is he even Lord? Why did he call himself the Son of God? Why did he call himself the Son of God? This area we want to treat it by the grace of God. So it's something that you need to listen attentively. You need to listen attentively. And I pray the Lord God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, by the grace of God, as I've said earlier, we are going to be looking at the scriptures. We, Jesus. Who image are we? Are we the image of God Almighty? Are we the image of the Holy Spirit? Is it even proper for you to be praying and said in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy, Holy Ghost? Is it proper? 
The baptism that you are baptizing and they are baptizing you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, is it proper? Is it something that you need to do? Is it a right thing? Are you supposed to be baptized in that name or you are not supposed to be baptized in that name? If you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, are you wrong? Are you wrong for baptizing in that name? So these are the things we want to treat today. It's the things that is giving the issue, you know, is giving confusions in the, in the body of Christ. One of the things I first want you to know is just, I want to bring out the identity of God and the identity of man. What makes us to be him? What makes us to be an identity of God? An angel not identity of God? Then if they are not, whose identity are they? Are you listening to me at all? Now, according to the scriptures, in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis, I mean chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verses uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses, uh, I think it should be 28 or so. So we are going to look at what is God saying concerning himself and the humanity. Himself and the humanity. And God said, 26, I'm reading from 26 now. And God said, let us make man in our image. After, listen to this statement very well, because the scripture, you see, every comma in the Bible has a meaning. Every full stop in the Bible has a meaning. So don't just read the Bible and read it. Read. No, 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 no. Everything about the scriptures, everything, it is full of meaning. He said, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the hills and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every crippled things that creepeth upon the head. Verse 27, listen to this. So, God created man in his own image. God created man in his own image. In, listen, in the image of God created he in. Listen to that. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he in. May and female created he them. Hallelujah. Now, the question I want to ask is that is God a man or a female? Or they are both gender? Because the Bible said men and female created he in. So the question is that, and you know, we are going in a long way now. Because we want to treat different things at the same time. We want to treat the baptisms. We want to treat uh, the name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We want to treat many things now. So the question is that, is God a male or a female? Because when he says he created E.E. and he says he's creating them in his own image, why did he have to say that? So we want to, we want to prove it. Everything from the scriptures, nothing like uh, sir, uh, but uh, <laughs> we are not bringing human knowledge. Do you see? So we are not bringing human knowledge here. Now, according to the scriptures, I want us to open to the book of First Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven. 
versus um versus eight yes now we are going to look at he said for the man is not of the woman listen to me very well this i'm using king james fashion i'm using king james version not new king james but the old king james i mean the first king james so that is what is written now in verse eight in some place it clarifies it more uh, very well to you to your understanding but let me read it from here it said for the man is not of the woman but the woman of the man now he's saying that for the man is not created from the woman but the woman is created from man that's what he's saying there do you understand me now now 12 say for as the woman is of man even so the man also by the woman but all things of god now here he's talking about after the woman is coming out from man after that time man begin to come out from woman now we are going back to that age who says that for the man is not from woman now it means they are meaning there now if we also go to the uh, to 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 to, uh, to 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 this thing in the bible it's also talking about mass is subjected to christ why christ is subjected to god this thing very well so that's why i said i want to put an interpretation by the grace of god to all of you he said man is sub he first come with woman he said woman is subjected to man man is subjected to christ christ is subjected to god almighty now what is the bible saying is god we come back to our question is god a female or a man god is not a female god is a man does he have penis like we have if god is a man then he must have penis the bible said let us create him in our own image and in our own likeness so it means that everything that pertains to god is created in man it is after all that man woman is not created from the man now i want to explain to you now why god said male and female there is a secret in god and there is a secret in man there's something that makes man to be a direct image of christ god almighty why did the bible said christ is subjected to god i will explain to you now we got to know that god almighty is this is a species is, is a serious personnel I cannot say personal. I can also say. I can also say personal. It's a TV identity. God has spirit. God is spirit. God has soul, and God has body. God is. He has spirit. He has soul, and he has body. God is not TV. He is one. I will explain to you. God is not TV. It's not as we identify him. So people identify that God Almighty is he has there's God Almighty and there's the Holy Spirit and there's a and there's the Son. There's nothing like that. God is Jesus, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is Jesus, Holy Spirit is God, Jesus is God. Now I will explain to you the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter one open to colossians chapter one colossians chapter one in the interpretations we are going now into the scripture not in a man's own knowledge we do need man's knowledge here 
we need the Holy Spirit to speak to us here. Colossians chapter 1. We are going to open it from uh, verses, uh, verses 15. 15. Now, here is talking, if you look from the verses 1, coming down to verse, uh, to completely verses 1, from verses, uh, from verses 1 to the end, he's talking about Jesus. Now, the Bible says in that 15, now, he said, who? There is, there is, before who, there is another thing that is up there. Yeah, you can read it on your own, but I'm, I want to bring the point because there are many points I want to verify here. The Bible says, who is the image of the in, invisible God, the firstborn of every creation, Jesus Christ himself. In, 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 uh, in, let's read from 12 so that you can understand he's talking about Jesus Christ. He said, giving thanks unto God, which has made us meet to be partaker of his inheritance, of the saints in light. Verse 13, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Of his what? Dear son. Now, in us, double color. In us, in whom, he's talking about his son now. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Who died for you? Jesus Christ. Even the forgiveness of sin. Double color. Now, Tom Kulam again. He's still referring to the first one. He now said, Who is the image of the invisible God? So it means that God is an invisible, is a soul. You cannot see God with your square eyes. But God has body. And the body of God, he said, Who is the image? The body like this of God is Jesus Christ. There's no way God can come to you as a physical. I mean, for him to come, because I will explain to you. He said, who is the in invisible God? The firstborn of every creation. Jesus Christ. And I said, listen, where this way you got to know. The Bible said, God. Don't forget that it's God that was creating everything. Don't forget. Now, I will listen. Continue to listen now. He said, for by him were all things created. By who? By him, and the Bible said it is God that created, so it is Jesus who created the world. I'm still coming back. He said, For by him is all things created, and, and that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they are true. You see, he said, By him, he said, By him, everything that is in heaven is created, so it is Jesus who created heaven himself. Is the one that created the head with his own hands. You see? Now, visible and invisible. Whether they are throne or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him. By who? Jesus. By him and for him. Now, we are still going. He said, and he is before all. And by him, all things consist that they come into existence. Now, it is, and he is the head of the body, the church. You see, who is the head of the church? Jesus. Who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead? Who died for you? Who died and resurrected again? Jesus. That, that in all things, he might have the preeminence. Eh? Listen, that's what I said. For it pleased the Father that in him, in him, should all fullness dwell. Do you see? So, the Father is in him, is him. <laughs> Don't forget that the realm of heaven is a spiritual realm. I will explain to you. That is why there is a statement that Jesus Christ made that says something. I'm still coming to that statement. Let's go to John chapter 1. John, the book of John, John chapter 1. John, 
John chapter 1. We are going there. What you explain to you what you explain there. John chapter 1. Now, let's hear this now. <laughs> he said, In the beginning was the word. Yeah. In the beginning, who is the word? The word of God, Jesus. In the beginning was with where was the word. And the word was with God. And the word, listen, it has become to now. And the word was with God. <laughs> listen. And the word was God. You see that now? <laughs> so, you see, the Bible, you need the spiritual understanding of the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. Bible is a spiritual written that needed that needed your understanding you needed to on that you needed the holy spirit to interpret it for you now listen to me we are still going so you can understand he said the same was in the beginning with god he's come back again and all all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made you see that? So, for you to know that it is Jesus that created everybody, that created the world, that created everything, I'm just explaining to you. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to come to the level of, uh, of you, you, uh, you see, of you understanding things well. In the verses, verses uh, nine, he said that, okay, verse 10, verse 10. He was in the world, Jesus Christ. That's coming to Jesus Christ. And the word was made by him, and the word knew him not. Not. Listen to this statement. See the pitiness. See the painfulness that is in there. He said, he was in the world, and the word was made by him. And the word knew enough. Imagine you to be the one that created the world, and the world is still not knowing you. Now, in that said, he came into unto his own, the people he has chosen with his own hands to be his own. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. The Israelite. Now. In that point, I am able to identify to you that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is the image, he is the God himself. Now, the Bible took about the Holy Spirit in the book of John. The Bible, so that because, because of our time, the Bible talked about the Holy Spirit in the book of John and also in Genesis. He said, the spirit of the Lord. Let me go back to this. I will just be quick about it. I just want to summarize everything so that I will not, uh, your time will not, be, will not be wasted. I won't, uh, I won't go too far. Now, he said, in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth, yes? And the earth was without form and void. Listen. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, yes? And the spirit of God move upon the face of water. That spirit of God moving upon the face of the water was the Holy Spirit. Now, that is why in the book of John, Jesus Christ said his disciple, he said, let me go. For if I do go, the disciple said, no, 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 do go. No, we don't want you to go. No, if you go, we miss you. No, no, do go. He said, hey, if I do go, the Holy Spirit will not come. If you really want the Holy Spirit to come, then I need to go. So, there's this kind of, uh, this kind of eating is mystery in that thing. And the mystery there is that Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Jesus wanted to go and also come back in the spirit. You do understand? Jesus Christ is the body, I told you before. It's just as if I am as a man now. Let me explain it with it to God for you. The God is, 
is soul, spirit, and body. The soul is the most powerful one. All of them are the same and powerful. But soul is the one that controls everything. That is why the Bible did not say all spirit are mine. It said all souls are mine. All souls are mine. Because you are still, as, as I'm explaining to you now, I'm activating in the spirit, but everything I'm telling you is coming from the soul. The knowledge I am receiving is coming from the soul. Soul is, is also what we call intellectual. Okay. Intellectual. The soul is the one controlling you. The soul is the one that will tell you that, oh, yeah, go and do that. It's the one that is making you as, is the one that is directing the path. So that is why they call him the father. Because he's the father of the personality. But he's the same person who is Jesus. Jesus is the body of that soul. Now, you cannot imagine me to separate me now. And you see me, you see me like this, and I say that, ah, no, no, no. We are, Jesus Christ is the one carrying the soul. He, Jesus Christ is the God himself. He's the God. But I'm explaining the deep things in Jesus for you. The spirit in Jesus Christ that makes him woman, that makes him personally God and makes him also woman. The spirit inside him is his Holy Spirit. The soul inside Jesus is the is the is, is is who we call the God the Father, but the truth is that He is the soul of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus, and Jesus Christ, the personality, is who you can see as the body. If you get to heaven now, you say, "I want to see God." Jesus Christ will appear to you. That's why Jesus was telling Thomas. He said, "When Thomas was at that time, Jesus was so playing with his because he's about to leave." You have to tell them the deep things about who he is. The disciple get to a level that they have to be more closer than today. Is they ask for a thing from Jesus and said, "Please, we want to see the Father." And Jesus' reply was, "I don't want us to go into the Bible again. I'm just quoting from the uh, Jesus Christ was just replying to them that you have seen the Father and yet you didn't believe because Jesus Christ is the Father." Himself, this God, the difference between God, Jesus Christ, or let me say God, God, if I mean God, it's also Jesus Christ, is that they are made of body, soul, and spirit. Why the angel, why the angel are not the image of God is because angels are made up of spirit and soul, but they do our body. Are you getting to their understanding now? They did not have body. They are made of, of body, spirit, and soul, but they didn't, I mean, they are made of, of spirit and soul, but they didn't have body. That's for the angels. Now, we, the human being, God is telling us that he wants to create us in his own image, in his own likeness. What makes us the image of God was that we as a human being, we have the body, we have the spirit, and we have the soul. Do you now understand now? That's what created us and made us the real image of God. Why the angels are not the image of God? That's why angels became a slave for us to be working for us. Normally, we are supposed to be like, to be a slave because they possess, they are in the spirit. But because we are the one carrying the image of God, we can command the angels self to be, be, to be in prison. Impossible. We can deal with anybody. We can deal with angel, DM, angel, Michael, whatsoever. Because we are image. When we get to a full maturity, the Bible says we are going to be the one. It's in the Bible. I just want to go. I don't want to go there. We are going to be the one to judge the angels. We begin to judge them because we are image of God, the personality of God. Now the reason. The reason angels are not forgiven whenever they commit sin is because only, only person, the, it is only the person that has flesh that can be forgiven. 
anyone that has the image of God that can be forgiven. If you do have image of God, you cannot be forgiven. If your image is complete, you can be forgiven. If not complete, completed, you cannot, you cannot be forgiven. That is why the Bible said there is no forgiveness after death. Because when you died, your body has died. You are not having soul and spirit. So you cannot be forgiven. You have, you have been out of the image. You are no more the image of God again. You didn't get the point now. You didn't get the point now. Do you understand now? Now, going back now, you have understand. We human beings, we have body and souls and spirit. So we are personality of God. Now, the reason, let me go back now to the first question. The reason now that makes God to say that women, he said he created them in male and female, is because male and female, though female came out from the man, but yet he created female too as his own image. They have body, they have spirit, and they have soul. But the real image of God is a man. Do you understand me now? So, in this thought, the reason Jesus Christ is calling himself the Son of God, one, is the art of humility. The Bible says something in Philippians. I don't want us to go too much, but let us let me just open it for you. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm just going to point it to you, then you can, uh, from there, uh, chapter 3, I think it's chapter 3. Yes, chapter 3. Chapter 3, yeah. Yes, chapter 3. Yeah, chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. If you read it from that verse 1, going straight from the 1 to the down, to the level starting from that verse 1, you, you will begin to see the explanation of Jesus Christ, how he was humbled. He humbled himself, not because, not because he didn't know who he is. Not because he, he didn't know who he is. He knew who he is, but he humbled himself to death. You don't understand? He humbled himself to death. The Bible says, it's written there, it said he humbled himself, he allowed death to kill him. He said he didn't make himself equal with God. Meanwhile, he's God himself. He allowed himself to be humbled. So when he was on earth, he humbled himself. That is why when he was telling the history like then, he was telling them, I and the Father are one. They didn't understand. They wanted to stone him. Assuming they waited to say, ah, can you please explain to us? He might have gone deep and explained to them. But they didn't understand. When he said that, they pick up with stone. They didn't want to hear more. When they were talking about Abraham, he said, before Abraham is, I am. They said, eh? you, are, you are the supporter of my father. They said, okay, stone again. He wants to stone him again. They didn't allow him to explain. That's the, that's the issue they had there. And that's why they were unable to receive the, the, the power of the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's why he said they were seeing, they were looking, but they cannot see. They were just listening, but they cannot understand. Because all of about them is doubt. They didn't allow themselves to be directed by the Holy Spirit. Now, as it now, with a little, I've clarified that Jesus Christ is God himself. With the evidence I've shown you, he's God himself. But he came in the personality of human being. That one is another story. When he came, he didn't come with power. He, he dropped all his power. But that one is a, it's another thing. Another story entirely. Now, we want to go to the people. Why is it right for you to say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? In Jesus' name, so shall it be in the name of the Father, the Son. Is it okay? It's not okay. If you say it, it is still okay. But it's, the written is not okay. It's just as if you wanted to come here and you said, uh, Peter 1, Peter 2, Peter 3. Is it proper? It's not proper. Peter 1, Peter 2, Peter 3. 
You know say Peter so Peter son Peter Holy Ghost. Oh, you say Peter Peter body Peter spirit Peter so oh yeah come. It's not making sense. Why did you Kukuma call me by my name Peter? Then I come. As you know that I cannot go to anywhere without my soul following me. Each my soul is inside me. My my body is inside me. Uh, it's, it's my outside me. My soul and my spirit is inside me. So wherever I go, my spirit go and my body, my soul, my soul go. Why, why can't you just call me Peter? So which means when you say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, it is a title. That Son, Father, Son, Holy Ghost is a title. It's just as if I'm bearing a post to not a post to you are calling me by my title. But when you say Peter, you are calling my name. So that is Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is what it means. So it is more preferable for you to, to pray everything in the name of Jesus. Don't say that uh, uh, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Do me it. So those who are baptized, their baptism is supposed to be in art of apostle. Let me read it from you. Art of apostle. Chapter 2. Out of Apostle chapter 2. Out of Apostle chapter 2, verses 30, 36. Is it 36 or 30? I'm coming. I'm coming. Out of Apostle 38 or so. Yes. Yes, 38. Out of Apostle chapter 2, verses 38. He said, Then Peter said unto them, Listen. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. In the what? And every one of you be baptized in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He didn't say that. In the name of Jesus. But, sir, but Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, uh, 28, he said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Abi, let me explain to you. I will explain to you. Let's go there. Let's open it. Let's open it. 28 Matthew 28 we are reading he said now listen to me 19 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the father in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost in the name of the father what is the name of the father listen well he said, Jesus is talking now. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What is their name? Is it not Jesus? Please, everybody can be bearing Father. My Father is a Father. Somebody's Father is a Father. So, Father is a general name. Are you with me now? Are you with me at all? Now, if I said father, father is a general name. My father is a father. Is it my, is my father, what, what are they calling me? Father. No reason. In the name of the father. In the name of the father is Jesus. So the understanding, the, the, the understand. The, the, the apostles understand what Jesus was saying. Because Jesus Christ tried to make himself well known. This personality, that this is who I'm personally in the name of Jesus. And the, that the name is Jesus Christ. I pray we enter heaven together in Jesus' name. So is the baptism of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, is it wrong? I don't say it's wrong. But it's not proper. 
Do you know what I'm saying now? I did not say it's wrong, but it's not proper. Go and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ only. I pray we will make it to heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Now you have understand what the Bible is saying about the personality of Jesus Christ. So whenever you are praying, don't just say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Just said in Jesus' name. And everything is established. God bless you. God bless you. God be with you. Bye. But before you go, I want you to kindly subscribe to this channel as there are many mystery things that need to be shown to you. It's still coming. Subscribe and press notification button. It's very important. Press notification button. Subscribe and press it. For so that you can also grow in the spirit and be disciple well. God bless you and God be with you. Bye.